Hi, thanks for coming. I'm Tim Smith from Gridcentric, and I'm going to be talking about virtual memory streaming and how it enables scale out virtualization for OpenStack. So, Gridcentric makes an OpenStack extension called Virtual Memory Streaming, uh, and I'll be going into a bit more detail about what it is exactly later. Uh, but what it enables is something we call scale out virtualization. Uh, and by that, we focus on three, three main things. Uh, being able to rapidly scale virtual infrastructure. So uh, going, taking a, a virtualized application and scaling it from a single virtual machine to dozens or hundreds of virtual machines on the order of uh, seconds. Uh, that also plays into kind of high performance and getting the most out of your, your physical infrastructure. Uh, and finally, uh, by increasing efficiency and reducing the amount of resources, physical resources that your virtual infrastructure is taking, uh, effectively lowering your total cost of ownership of your OpenStack cloud. So on the, on the rapid scale front, what I, uh, what I mentioned earlier about taking a virtualized application, something like a web service or a virtual desktop uh, pool, and being able to instantly scale that on demand. So as more users come to your website or as more, more of your desktop users log into their machines in the morning, being able to uh, instantaneously scale up the virtual infrastructure to be able to handle that load and then being able to shrink it back down on demand as well. Uh, so VMS enables this, this ability to rapidly scale up and down uh, in demand to workload in a time frame that uh, essentially allows you to construct real-time auto-scaled applications. Virtual memory streaming is based on this uh, ability to create what we call a live snapshot or a live image. And the idea is essentially that you take a running virtual machine uh, as a template and create what we call a, a live snapshot or a live image of it. So this goes beyond just taking a regular disk snapshot it's also uh, the CPU and memory state of the virtual machine. And that live snapshot, we can essentially launch new virtual machines from that on demand that come up ready to run and ready to, ready to service requests. Uh, because these, these virtual machines are clones of this live snapshot, we're able to do a lot of memory optimization and memory sharing among them. And because they skip the boot process, uh, they're uh, they're able to skip a lot of the boot-related network and storage I.O. that would normally uh, occur with a, with, a, uh, with a full boot cycle. So moving on to the, the products that we provide, uh, as I mentioned, the, main, the uh, main technology we provide is virtual memory streaming, or what we call BMS. And uh, it eliminates that boot the bootstorm associated with uh, booting up virtual machines. So if you run a lot of windows on your infrastructure, or you run a lot of uh, application servers or web servers, you know that booting them up and getting them to the point where they, they are ready to perform work takes a lot of time and will actually put a lot of load on your network. And I'll be showing a demo uh, video shortly of uh, booting up some windows machines and uh, how quickly we're able to get, to them, get them to launch without using a lot of IOPS. Uh, because the, these virtual machines are, boot, are launching from these live image snapshots, we're able to uh, efficiently stream in the memory used, that, uh, their memory footprint on demand, so they don't occupy their complete memory footprint up front. Uh, so we're, we're essentially doing copy on write on the memory. Uh, one of the features of VMS is that we're fully integrated with Active Directory, so you can bring up Windows VMs, and as you're bringing them up, they can auto-register auto with Active Directory, so you don't need to go through a couple boot cycles. The, uh, the second product we offer, which is an, uh, an open source uh, project called Reactor, is a uh, scale manager and load balancing piece of software that essentially can, can sit in front of EMS, and uh, you can define metrics for, for an application that uh, when, uh, when Reactor sees an, a large number of users coming in or sees your response time starting to go up, can increase the number of virtual machines on the back end using VMS to quickly bring them up and then scale them back down. 
<coughs> so all of this stuff is, is fully integrated with OpenStack. Uh, at the top, uh, Reactor acts as kind of a, a application front end, a load balancing uh, scale manager. Uh, we have a, a lot of OpenStack code uh, that goes by the name of Cobalt that acts as a kind of interface with VMS that sits at the actual hypervisor, uh, hypervisor layer. And uh, we currently support both KVM and Zen hypervisors. So the use cases that VMS is really good for uh, fall into a number of categories. One is your horizontally scalable web services. So these are, are things like, uh, like WordPress or uh, Apache or Nginx or Hadoop where the, the way that you go from uh, getting a little bit of work done to getting a lot of work done is spinning up a bunch of virtual machines. And if, you do, if you're constantly spinning up virtual machines, you, you'll find that uh, the hit on your resources is actually big enough that you end up spending more time waiting for your virtual machines to come up than you actually do performing work. So because VMS is really good at being able to quickly spin up virtual machines, and once they're up, they're, they're extremely memory efficient, uh, you get a lot more out of the, the hardware that you have. Um, another use case is memory intensive middleware. So you know, if you're running a big uh, Java servlet, um, you know, these, these applications typically take minutes to, to start up and, and to be able to warm up. They occupy a lot of memory, uh, and so they're, they're very hard to scale normally. Uh, but with VMS, you can, you can essentially create a template live image of a VM that's, that's already started, already warmed up, the application's ready to run, and create this live image from that, and then be able to spin up new instances of, this, uh, of your middleware servers very, very quickly. Uh, if you're doing a lot of development and test, uh, especially across multiple platforms and multiple versions of operating systems and, and say, browsers or, or different test configurations, you want to be able to, to do that efficiently. So you want to be able to do, you want to have a wide variety of uh, environments that you're going to be able to test on, uh, but you don't necessarily want to have them sitting around all the time. So what you want is a way to be able to quickly spin up a large number of virtual machines of one type, do your testing, and then collapse them back down. So VMS, again, because it's, it's very quick to spin up complicated virtual machines, uh, is very good for that use case. And finally, for Windows, uh, Windows Desktop or Windows Server, Windows, when it starts up, takes, uh, performs a lot of I.O. On your, on your storage devices just to get to the point where uh, it's ready to be logged in. Uh, we found that it's somewhere on the order of 20,000 up, up to around 70,000 uh, boot-related input-output operations, so storage IOPS. Uh, just to get to the point where Windows 7 VM is, is sitting at the login screen. And with VMS, what we do is we just take a single VM and we get it to the point where it's sitting at the login screen and then we take this snapshot. And then from that point on, uh, you can spin up new desktop VMs very, very quickly. So I'm gonna play a, a short uh, demo video just to show uh, that principle kind of in an action. Oops. So uh, we've got a, a live image here created with a Windows 7 uh, desktop. And what we've just done through the, the using the regular Nova client, which is going to talk to our extension, is uh, spun up five of these clones. You can see they've got their network addresses, and they're they're in this building state. Uh, and meanwhile, on this uh, in in this Horizon plugin, we can see that the uh, at the uh, lower part of the screen, our disk operations are, are remaining low, and our memories, uh, or yeah, I guess we'll we'll click over to that right now. The uh, the operations on our disk are, are remaining low at around 200 input-output operations per second. Uh, normally, if you're going to spin up five, uh, five desktops, 
you would see something around 20,000 to 70,000 input oper operations, IOPS per desktop uh, for around somewhere between 100,000 IOPS and, and 350,000 IOPS, but we were able to get to the point where these five VMs were ready uh, with much, much fewer, somewhere around, uh, you know, just around 5% of that. Uh, and as you can see, the, the VMs are ready and you can log into them and so on. Uh, another another thing to point out is that the memory usage uh, for these five VMs, they're, they're two gigabyte VMs, so they would have normally occupied around 10 gigabytes of physical memory on, on our host, and currently uh, they're sitting around two gigabytes. Uh, so, you know, just sitting there idling, they're, they're occupying about a fifth. If we're actually to log into these VMs, start running Office, start running our, all our applications, it would still, uh, it would still hold steady at probably around four gigabytes total, so around a 60% reduction in memory. Uh, anyhow, that's, uh, that was the uh, demo, and uh, we've got a booth just uh, on the other side of uh, this wall here. If you'd like to come by later and ask us questions or uh, come see a live demo, we'd be happy to show you one. Uh, I'm Tim Smith uh, from Gridcentric. Again, thank you very much for coming.